Hello everybody, Computer Kid 1416 here, and today I'm going to be sharing you to download YouTube videos. Okay, first off, make sure you download the YouTube download. Hello YouTube, Computer Kid 1416 here, and welcome to my 10th anniversary special. It's hard to believe that I started my channel 10 years ago in February of 2010. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun making videos for you guys these past 10 years. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole history of my channel. I did that in my 100th video special, actually. Um, you can go watch that if you're interested in the history of this channel. But for this 10th anniversary special, I thought we would do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I just never got around to it. And so I figured that the 10th anniversary is a better time than ever. And that's to do a in-place upgrade from Windows 1.01 all the way to Windows 10. Now, this has been done several times before on virtual machines. You can find the videos everywhere. But only once, as far as I know, has this been attempted on real hardware. And that was when Windows 8 was out. And not only that, but they didn't have any kind of commentary involved. It was just a time lapse. So I figured I'd give it my take with commentary. And, um, yeah, so I thought it would be really interesting. Now, the computer I'm using for this is the Dell Latitude C610 that I've done a video on before. And this is because it's got over a 100 gigahertz processor, so it's compatible with Windows 7 through 10, as well as um, the ability to upgrade to 1 gig of RAM, which again is required as well. So, I yep, figured this would be a perfect machine for that. But anyway, so what we're going to be starting out with is DOS 5.0, which I'm big shout out to the Flying Scotsman here on YouTube for helping me figure this out because I was having trouble because this machine does not have a floppy drive, so I needed a way to install DOS on here. And he suggested using VMware, and instead of using a virtual hard drive, use the physical hard drive with a USB adapter. So I was able to get it installed using that, so again, thanks again. And then what I did was, as you can see, I copied over the Windows 1 through 95 files onto the hard drive. And then what I'm going to do is, after I install Windows 95, I'm going to expand the drive. It's actually a 60 gig drive, but because it's a FAT16 partition, it only sees 2 gigs. So after I install Windows 95, I'm going to go ahead and expand the partition using a Cronus and then go from there. So anyway, just to give you an idea of how, kind of how I got set up for this. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, what we're going to have to do for Windows 1.0 is substitute the A drive as the directory I have on here because Windows 1 setup does not support you choosing the directory where it's installed. It expects it to be in the A drive, so... All right, there we go. All right, so adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. Yep, C slash Windows. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get mouse to work, but just in case, we'll choose the second option. I don't know if color is going to work either, but oh well. Okay, so now let's try it out. The rest of the video will be faster paced, I promise. It just For the first couple versions, I'm going to kind of take a little slower here. But yeah, so here we are in Windows 1.01. So no mouse support as I expected, but that's fine. We don't have color either though, so we're not going to mess with much in terms of settings. Now when we get to Windows 2, we're going to go ahead and change up the color scheme quite a bit to see how far it'll go in this upgrade path. But for now, it's just, it's just I'm going to let it play around with. So let's go to, first thing I'm going to do is go to write.exe and start a like a file here that we're going to open in every single version. So I think it's Alt F, yep. Okay. Okay, so there we have that. Now, I can't remember how to exit without a mouse, so we're just going to do a hard reset here. Maybe a little overkill, but 
Oh well. And not much more we can do except just play around with the different programs. Like, can you believe it? Reversey. It's a little commercial reference there. Um, don't know how to play this game, so I'm just kind of messing around here. Alright, so that's enough of that. Let's do one final reset, and we have to install Windows 2, which you have to do from DOS anyway. Okay, so... The angle I'm typing at is kind of awkward, so... Alright, let's try it. And there we go, guys. And now we have mouse support, too, which is pretty awesome. So now we can really do stuff. So let's see. So Reverse-E is still there, which I don't know if it came with Windows 2 or not. So it may have already been on there anyway. But anyway, it's, yeah, we got Reverse-E in color now. Probably could have had color in Windows 1, too, if we had the right drivers. But trying to see an about. Yes, this did originally come with Windows 2, so that's what this is. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing, but oh well. That's not really the point of this. So, okay, so let's go to our ver.write file. There we go, so now we can add a line. Oh, now we got some other programs here. We got Clock, which I think Windows 2 came with anyway. So, yep, we got the same programs as before. Worked just fine. Now we've got a control panel where we can adjust some settings. So let's go into color settings. And we're going to change up the colors quite a bit so we can see how far to go for. Now, I think we should be able to at least go until... Should be able to go into at least like Windows, at least Windows 9X, I would think, and then hopefully it'll work in maybe even XP as well. We'll have to see. I'm genuinely curious. Okay. There we go. That's um, very, very nice looking, if I do say myself not. Oh, and we also got paint now, which I actually think paint may have been on 1.0, but anyway, it's not in color yet. Um, that won't happen until 3.0. <laughs> So speaking of that, let's go ahead and go to 3.0. I'll we'll have to do that from, from DOS once again. Unfortunately, it won't seem to install from in C slash Windows with all those other files in there. So, which is really strange, but what I basically what I did was I renamed the old folder to win old. And I'm just going to make it a new folder. Which unfortunately means it will not transfer over all the color settings and stuff like that. But I can just redo all that and go from there. Alright. Here we are in the program manager. So as you can see... For those of you who are more familiar with 3.1, you'll notice these icons look a little more, a little less colorful and um, a little more boring looking, I guess you could say. So let's go ahead and change all the colors and stuff in here. Again, nothing specific, just kind of want to change these up so that well, we'll see how far we can go with these.
Oh my god, that's not really attractive, not. Oh, well, let's give it a wallpaper that can transfer over. Uh, what's party? Again, I'm not familiar with 3.0 as much. Uh, it's kind of real 90s looking, I guess. Kind of looks like the old CBS show Zoom, if you guys remember that. That's what that kind of reminds me of. Anyway, let's see what games we have built in here. For Percy, can you believe it? Uh, I gotta say that every time, I guess. I don't know how to play Reversi, as I said, but oh well. I got Solitaire now, which became a classic. I do know how to play Solitaire, but I'm not gonna waste the time with that right now. Well, let's go in and look at the old stuff, see if we can get anything from there. See when old is what I named the old folder. Also, I changed our document name to test because I thought maybe the version name was messing it up, but apparently it's, it didn't make a difference. It still messes up anyway. Yeah, I can't get over how 90s that, that wallpaper looks. Alright, so now we can go into Windows 3.1, which is a lot more familiar territory. And I don't, I think you have to run it from DOS, but I'm just going to try it here. Yep, so you have to do it from DOS, that's fine. No big deal. to Windows. No sound or anything that's expected. I don't think we'll get sound until 95 or maybe even 98 when it installs automatically. Um, so we still got Reversi from 2.0. Reversi did not come with 3.1 usually, so that's cool that that transferred over. I just got Minesweeper now, which people... I'll talk about not being able to play this game. It's actually very simple. All you have to do is just you look at the numbers and that's how many mines are touching it. So it's a very strategic game. I'm not going to worry about that right now. That's um... So it gave me a compatibility error but I was still able to run it anyway. That's pretty cool. It's the old 2.1 clock program. Yeah, pretty cool that still works. We'll see how far that works for. That's the old paint. The monochrome one. Finally, let's update our Windows 3.1. And then we will... Move on to 95. Okay then. Well, that's probably going to get some of that with the with doing this. This is not recommended to do an upgrade path this heavily, but uh, I was just doing this for experimentation purposes, of course. Alright, so let's see if we can run 95 setup from here. I really doubt it, but we can try it, I guess. Oh, we actually can. Okay, that's cool. That makes things easy. This is 95A, by the way, and so it only has FAT16 support. We will have to expand the drive. After we install Windows 98, we'll have to expand the drive to FAT32.
It's loading. Loading makes me nervous. Alright guys, it looks like we're about to boot up. Yep, we're in Windows 95 now, so I cannot believe it. So, yep, so you can see my color scheme transferred over. I uh, didn't notice if the... Yeah, I recognize the CD-ROM right now. That's good, because I'll need that for Windows 98, so... There we go. Oh, we can't use the current format, no worries. We will save it in the Windows directory. Alright, no problem. Alright, so let's try... Oh, okay, we can't run reverse alright? Let's try clock. Okay, can't run that either. It's interesting, so we've lost some program compatibility. Let's try. It looks like all the 3.1 programs still work, which can be expected. It's to be expected, people actually did run Windows 3.1 programs on 95 back in the day. Alright, so I'm actually going to go ahead and expand the partition and then install Windows 98. So let me stop the camera for a minute and get all that set up and I'll come back in a little bit. Since we got enough hard drive space available I'm just going to go ahead and install Windows 98 and then expand the partition. Alright there we go. Yep. Alright I'm going to fast forward here.
unfamiliar territory as this is what I usually run on this machine. We have no sound or anything, but that's fine. May not get that until XP actually is pretty good about detecting drivers, but anyway. Got our usual built-in programs, of course. Ah, it's still showing reversey. That's interesting. From 3.0, I guess. Hmm, pretty cool. Again, I do not know how to play reversey. Alright, let's go update our file here. And did we lose our color scheme? I think we lost our color scheme. Huh, we lost our color scheme, I guess. Let's see if I can go get it back. Yeah, I guess we lost our color scheme. Oh well, let's just go ahead and make a new one and see how far we can go with that. Okay, well it didn't go as far as I thought it would, but that's still kind of cool that it went. It did go as far as it did, at least the background stay. Uh, make up a decision already. Alright, that's fine. So now what we're going to do is, first of all, we've got to edit our document. First of all, our typical programs still work. Or 3.1 programs, that is. Right, there's our document there. All right. Alright, so let's start cutting the head again. I'm going to expand the hard drive partition and then install Windows ME. Okay, I went ahead and expanded the partition off camera and went ahead and installed Office 97 so we'd have an example of a program to upgrade with. So now let's move on to Windows ME setup and I'll of course speed this up. Alright, looks like we've got our desktop now. Now I'm curious if 
where the directory of the Windows ME video is, I want to see, because I can, so I can look at that in later versions. Um, yeah, I've always kind of liked this little video. I guess you could say it's one of the few <laughs> good things about ME. Okay, application data, okay. Dot HTA, I'm not familiar with that file type. Well, it's not letting us run it because it needs to be at 644.80 or higher, and I can't do that because my video card drivers aren't installed. So I'm just not going to worry about that. Um, hopefully when I get to later versions, I can still run that file, though. Anyway, let's go to see if our games are still there. Versi's not showing up in that menu, but I can imagine it would still work under here. Clock. There we go, reversey. Yep, still works just fine. All right, now let's move on to 2000. And this is going to be interesting because we are going to be converting to NTFS. And also of note that starting with 2000, you no longer need a dedicated upgrade copy. You can just use the regular version to upgrade.
so here we are. Um, we have the same desktop still. And let's do our usual check. So we have Office 97 still working fine. Not surprising. What I am curious, genuinely curious about is Reversi and all those 3.x programs because we are now no longer on Windows 9x. So. Also, I forgot to update my file earlier, so let's do that now. Hey, it actually works. I didn't think it was going to for a minute, but it actually did. Let's check that ME program that we were talking about earlier. Uh, which one is it? I forget. Forgot that's just an icon, okay. Huh, I cannot remember what program this is. Well, I can't say I find that again, so it must have gotten erased, unfortunately. Oh, well, let's update our file here. Okay, there we go. Alright. Oh, excellent. I erased that, but that's fine as long as I don't save. Alright, so now let's install XP. All right, well, let's cut forward again.
also went ahead and bumped the RAM to one gig while the during the break. So, yep. So we'll be good for Vista and above. Now, as you can see, the resolution's been changed quite a bit. Um, you can see the how tiny that image was from Windows 3.0. Which means we have somewhat of a video driver, so that's kind of nice. And obviously sound drivers as well. And this isn't actually out of the question, believe it or not. Back in the day, some C610s came with Windows XP, and mine actually has a Windows XP sticker on it. And I would never use XP on a Pentium 3 nowadays, but back in the day it kind of made sense. I mean... If you wanted to run the latest programs and this is all you had, then that was better than nothing, so. You know, I don't remember XP having these sounds, like, listen here. When you hover over stuff. I think that's because this is RTM, Windows XP RTM. And usually I use at least Service Pack 2, if not 3, to begin with, so. I guess that's why I'm not used to that. Anyway, let's see what programs carried over here, so. Looks like we got Office 97 working just fine. And we got the Office Assistant still working. I believe Vista is when that got taken away. The Microsoft Agent. And I believe in Vista and 7 you can still install it manually. We may try that. But I, I believe starting with Windows 8 you can't even install it at all. Unless there's some kind of workaround I don't know about. But anyway, let's go to update our file. And I'm assuming most 16-bit programs will probably still work. They think they do in XP, especially RTM. I know after Service Pack 2 came out, that it lost compatibility for some programs. Like, you can no longer run the Windows 3.0 Program Manager, for example. But I believe some most programs should still work fine. Like, let's try Reversi here. Yeah, Reversi still works just fine. So that's kind of cool. Didn't mean to full screen it there. Alright, so now let's update our program. Or, um, document, that is. It's still showing the old-fashioned right symbol there. The typing's awkward down here again. Oh, okay, so we have to convert to a new file format, apparently. Okay. That's cool. Alright, so let's move on to Vista. Which I've never personally done. I know the Power Mac Galaxy here on YouTube has done Windows Vista and 7 running on the C610 before, so they are possible. Just very impractical. I bet it will not run well at all. Uh, there we go, Vista. Alright, let's go ahead and install it. Oh, you have to be running Service Pack 2. Alright, well let me do that off camera just so I don't take too much time. Let me install Service Pack 2 real quick.
Alright, here we are on a site that I've never never thought I'd see. Windows Vista running on the C610. You see we got one gig of RAM, which I bumped it to recently, one gigahertz of RAM, which we needed to be able to make this possible in the first place. Uh, we don't worry about that right now. You see we still got the old wallpaper, which is kinda nice. I wasn't sure if it would transfer over to Windows Vista. So that's kind of cool that it did. Alright, let's do our usual checks. First of all, I'm curious about... I mentioned I think Microsoft Agent is no longer existent in Vista. Oh, it actually is. That's kind of cool. So maybe it was 7 that got rid of Microsoft Agent. Still says SMS DOS 5, which is weird to see. I doubt this will work, but let's try a 16-bit program here. Or maybe it will, because this is the 32-bit version of Fista. Oh yeah, it actually works. I did not think it would. That's kind of cool. That's really cool to see. So let's update our... Let's update our file here. Oh, we've lost access to our file, it looks like. Let's see if we can open that in WordPad. Nope, it's not compatible, so, well, we could try this, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so it does work. Okay, I figured it was still compatible. But we can't save, okay? So it looks like it's possible, but it's just read only. So let's do save as. And let's, yeah, let's change, make it a rich text format. Ah, oh, documents folder's fine. Yep. So, see anything else we can look at? I'm gonna definitely image this drive when I'm done with this video. And, you know, if there's anything that I want to come back to later that I want to experiment with further, I will certainly do so. And I may just play around with it for my own sake as well. Uh, not really much else to show. We can go ahead and move on to one of those seven, I guess.
Alright, well here we are in the Windows 7 desktop. Now unfortunately this may be the end of the line. Um, I've been, it's been brought to my attention that, I mentioned this earlier, but I've had it pretty much confirmed that Windows 8 and 10 will not work on a Pentium 3 because of the CPU does not, is not supported. So, unfortunately this may be the end of the line here. You know, we'll, we'll give it a try anyway. I can't, I can't do anything but try, right? Alright, so. First of all, let's do our usual tests. For us, he still works just fine. I think because we're in the 32-bit version of Windows. Because, see, I've always used 64-bit Windows 8. Windows, I mean, Windows 7. So that's I guess that's why I'm not used to being on a half sixteen bit support, but I guess it is compatible, as you can see. Which is kinda neat. Uh, let's open our test file here. And we still have um office assistant, which again I thought was taken away with seven, but must have been Windows eight, I guess. Okay. Now let's try Windows 8, which again, I'm not thinking it's going to work, unfortunately, but you know what? We can only try. We got this far, we might as well try. And you might have noticed when I did setup, I, I blurred it out because I didn't want to show my information, but it actually supported my, it actually picked up my Wi-Fi card in this machine, so that's kind of cool. Well, guys, unfortunately, it looks like this is going to be the end of the video. Um, as I suspected, you need much newer than a Pentium 3. Well, not much newer, but uh, from what I've heard, you need at least like a Pentium D or a AMD Athlon. You know, something that will be NX compatible, which the Pentium 3 is not. So, yeah, it's kind of disappointing that we didn't get this all the way. But, you know what, just seeing that new Windows logo on there was kind of cool. And... Also, you know, the fact that I got all the way to Windows 7 is still pretty impressive for a machine this old. So, you know, again, not the best conclusion, but you know what? It is it is what it is. We still had fun in this video, of course. And, you know, I still think it's a really cool 10th anniversary video. And who knows? Maybe we'll revisit this idea at some point if I do get a machine that's, you know, maybe a little just slightly newer that I, I can do this on. So, but for now, I'm going to leave it here. Um, I appreciate it once again that you guys have been supporting me for all these years um, it's hard to believe I've known this 10 years now and um, yeah here's to another another 10 years and beyond you know I, I don't plan on stopping this hobby anytime soon so anyway thank you guys again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video bye